is um, Thursday, which means I hang out with Lisa Rice. And Cheryl's hanging out with us, too. Yeah, we we've, think we've, we've conquered our microphone issues. So if you guys could let us know that you can hear us and everything is okay. Well, basically, we there was some echoing going on so we still haven't solved it completely as you can tell it's each of us has one airpod in instead of two what a... what 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 no i'm okay <laughs> <laughs> someone's gonna come I'm right sorry, there and go was... what happened to kathy <laughs> kathy's a hot emotional mess people <laughs> Just deep breath. Send send all your love. We need your love. And no, but but we got. We do have. Cheryl we, has a grown up microphone. I have a grown up like mic. Microphone. I have a now. grown up mic now. It's right. Just, I had to yay. label them with who's is who's. But that looks better. Very pro. That is a very <laughs> pro microphone. Well, at least now we don't have to like go through the drama of trying to hook up the little microphones to her phone and then connect her phone to eCam and all that. So the, now the it's just The people don't need to know that. Like it's know. not like in the yeah, eCam fam. I'm, people... I'm very impressed and also it makes you look like you're the boss wearing that thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, anyhow, we're all very excited about upgrading our um, audio tech a little bit. So Lisa Rice, if you don't know, is extraordinary. And mm -hmm. if you didn't see her class yesterday, you should. You should. And I will go back and put in the link where they can go into get the link and all of that, right? Is that still working? I'll have to check with my tech guy, but I, I, I'm thinking it is working. How about one of you guys <laughs> post the link you want people to go to in the comments? And that way, because um, you guys should you, go. She did a holiday class last night for free. So there's no oh. excuse in not going to hang out. And you're the reason I got this giant king oyster mushroom, actually. <gasps> Fantastic. Show, show, grab, it's at the top. It's oh, my gosh. Top. I don't know what's in your soil there, but... I, yeah. What is that? What's in the soil there? That's incredible. Let me see the rutabaga in the room. So, okay. the rutabaga in the room. Here, pull that over. So, I, and we're gonna do a little box of um, unbagging. Show and this. tell. So, Are we doing and, a show and tell? Yeah, I'll do it later though. But I also got. So there's this place you go and you get these pack bags. It's twenty five dollars for what you can put in the bag, and you, I'm good. So there's like green beans and gi giant carrots and mushrooms. Oh my gosh, and I want to go there. And, and so, then you get um, a free thing. I got a free <laughs> pineapple, a free cilantro. Now you're just being obscene. I, <laughs> and and it's everybody's, as big as my going, head, right? everybody's going, why do you want these big fat carrots? A, they're delicious, but B, when they're big like this, they are hard to dice because that's a lot of rolling around, but they spiralize really well. So when you get a Ooh. giant one in your CSA, yes. put it in the spot, because you can always spiralize them because they're not only big certain times of the year, right? I think now that's it's fantastic. I, oh, yeah, that's a great, because, yeah, spiralizing when they're not fat like that is really a, a And nightmare. they just make those macaroni things, and I'm like, that's <laughs> not real macaroni. You're not fooling anybody. Oh, and so I went shopping all morning long, so that's from one place. Then we went to the Raleigh Farmer's Market. They had a bag, and it wasn't just these, of giant potatoes were $2 each instead of by the pound, so it was actually even cheaper. This is probably at least three or four pounds. This is at least, this is two. And this is the purple on the inside. It's ubi, right? I U love ube? those. That you would tell be me a how I'm supposed snack. to say it, Lisa. U ube? Ube? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'll forget oh again, gosh. but I'll try real hard. I love those. I know, and they're so pretty. They make no, everything. I, in the soil there. That's. Let me see more. It's, I mean, because those, those oh. everything so far is humongous. Well, and everything isn't, but it is the end of the season, and we've been getting all these seventy degree weather. Mm -hmm. So, like when you go to Raleigh, it's the actual farmers, and there was this one. This is the only. They had two rutabagas. This was the smaller of the two. Seriously, that is bigger than your head. That's I used to do this. I would go like, is it as big as my head when I would unbox CSAs? And so I've been really missing rutabagas since I haven't been having a CSA. 
because I just can't pay like four dollars a pound at Whole Foods for rutabagas and turnips. Like it's supposed to be poor people food. Absolutely. That's where the CSA boxes are brilliant because like and, and like you said, it's like seasonal. So this time of year, you get a lot of them and they keep really well. They do. I mean, and obviously this one, I'm going to lose some of this just because it's mm -hmm. got some cracks in it. But I think I may even blanch it and then freeze it and just have it kind of all chopped up, ready to go into some um, soups. I don't know. I think I'm going to I'm going to look it up. But I think what you should do, because it's like the size you can make a roast out of that. <gasps> Dar That's Dar true. Derek Sarno does these roasts with rutabagas and he turns them into like a pastrami and stuff where he like <gasps> seasons them and, and, and he makes lunch meat out of a rutabaga. Like it's you know, crazy. I was thinking about doing that because I did that with, um, with white sweet potatoes, yellow sweet potatoes and something else. Beets. Beets. Yeah. I did corned beets. I did uh, turkey slices. But yeah. I actually used the mandolin first and then mixed it with the spices and roasted it. But I'll no, look he up does that one. Whole thing. Yeah, look up Derek's because he um, he probably blanches them first, but he like bastes them and roasts them with tons of seasoning. And then like he slices it like a deli slice. It's pretty cool. Okay, I'll check that out because it's weird, but like turnips are okay. And I love turnips roasted. I like them in stews. Like... I got first introduced to turnips in my 30s. Like, it was just not something I'd ever had. And um, the person I was dating then was like, oh, we're going to go to my mom's. We're going to have mashed turnips. It's the best thing in the whole world. And it was not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, I was like. I, you know what? That was the one vegetable that I hated when I was a kid. Like, I love all vegetables now. I haven't met one I, haven't, I didn't like. But if you had asked me when I was a kid which, which one I didn't like, it was a turnip. But I think because when I'd had them, they weren't really prepared very well. You know, it's kind of like eating overcooked green beans when you're a kid. You think that's the only way they come, right? Yeah. Well, and I'm from the South. Now, you said your mom's from the South. Yes. Didn't you? And where yes. is she from originally? My mom. She was, well, she mainly grew up in Baltimore, but like the West Virginia, um, Carolinas, like the Chesapeake Bay, that whole sort of. Okay. She had a lot of family around there. Okay, so, yeah, awesome. so when I would visit my grandmother, Nanan, you would walk into her house and her table would be covered with this doily tablecloth. And you couldn't see the table because it was covered with like, there's a Smithfield ham, there's a giant thing of fried chicken, Jimmy Dean sausages, potatoes, green beans, overcooked, pale. I mean, just, just biscuits it was very like that kind of fair and she had type 2 diabetes it it lends it lends itself to that a lot of salt I remember my great aunt when I was maybe I was 16 then she was like trying to talk my doctor into letting me have country ham because she had like extremely high blood pressure and he's like if you eat even a piece this big you can't have salt in anything for the whole month wow and she was yeah just they like, really cure that ham too like it already has salt naturally but then they mm -hmm. just put salt in it right but yeah that was that that was the southern part of my my mom's family you guys are very familiar with that as well mm -hmm. oh yeah well your fam part of your family's from georgia no no alabama, alabama. oh wow and i'm from north carolina originally so so the fair was very similar Mm. Yeah, lots, lots of food, lots of salt, lots of grease, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, and welcome to Plants Only Muncher. That's a great name. <laughs> and Barbara and Vegan Knowledge and Linda. Um, lots of things about your class. Barbara says Lisa's class was great. Oh. Jennifer says hi from Colorado. Apple says hi to all of us. It was so much fun last night, Lisa. You're a kitchen whiz, and she is. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. thank you, Apple. I can't stop thinking about your fennel in the stuffing, and I want to do that. So thank you for that. Too. Apple always has these great suggestions and recommendations. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we. I want to hang out with you, Apple, at some point. <laughs> oh, me too. I think we're going to just have to go do a meetup. 
Yeah. I think we'll go so. to Canada. I think we need to. Yes. Yep. yes. Canada trip. <laughs> His kid is awesome, it. too. And Rill says, here in sunny Milwaukee, Lisa, you were great last night. I was there for the whole time, and Aww. she's looking forward to this conversation. And you guys, we're just kind of having a free-form conversation, so always, in especially in this show, if you have some things you want to talk about as far as, like, body image, nurturing yourself, self-care, just throw them on in there, else we may just ramble today, and that's okay, too. I, I was like, we should just call it keeping it real. <laughs> keeping it real. Keeping it real, right? That's kind of what it is. I like that. And Apple said that she's never seen a potato that big. You want to show both of them. And there were I don't some, think um, I have either. <laughs> nothing. It's nothing compared to this rutabaga. I can't get over the rutabaga because I know they're big and I see big ones all the time, but I don't. I honestly don't think I've ever seen one that size. And this was this. There were two. There were only two, and the other one was like a third. And that's bigger. from a far. That so you go to the farm and you take a bag, and for twenty five dollars, is that the same one or no? Different? I went two different places. So the one with the bag, oh. it's Perkins Orchard. And it's in Durham, North Carolina. It's actually pretty cool because you go in and it's not a little hut. It's kind of like a medium-sized hut. And they have also like all these varieties of apples and anything that grows that you can fit in here for $25. And I've put it all the way up to the top before and they won't say anything. Like you shove some collars in there or something. <laughs> and I would totally do that. <laughs> oh, I'm packing. At the bottom, they have little Brussels sprouts. That whole thing is solid. There's probably like 15 pounds of food in there. It might there. be more than that. It's pretty it's heavy. It's really what? heavy. And, you know, we talked about that, I believe, on one of our shows where how to eat, you know, sort of on a budget, which I think is really important um, because I try to, when I'm teaching the classes, talk about those options because not everyone can afford to go to Whole Foods or, you know, some of the markets. And so those kinds of farms are really good to know about because that's a great value and that will really stretch well and what's so cool about there is they all like i could have gotten some oyster mushrooms king mushrooms shiitake and if you fill that bag up with mushrooms that's that, a that, bargain for that's 25 like hundred dollars of mushrooms for 25 dollars, basically <laughs> right. right and sometimes they'll be like you need to go use them that day but this is mm -hmm. what's so interesting about perkins or orchard is that you go and you're kind of in this neighborhood, this suburban yeah. neighborhood, and there's a big sign, and you go in the driveway, and you go back, and you're like, whoa! So it, it used to be mm -hmm. someone's very giant backyard that now has, like, this and everything grew around, cabin like, with all the stuff. They have another building with, like, prepared mm -hmm. food. That sounds really cool. But the neighborhood grew up around it, and, like, it's only, like, like maybe a quarter of a mile from where my office is. And it um, there's so there's an office park just like right there, and then it's this neighborhood, and there's like apartments. It was his grandfather's and, house. I yeah. think he's un, he's 30 years old or under. His grandfather started it as just kind of like a, a little neighborhood stand. He used to have a stand up at the top of the road and up um, at the top of the driveway. And now, like so, like you could have gone like during um, the fall. You know those garden cart. Let's see. Here we go. Garden carts you get at Lowe's that you pull that have the mm -hmm. the yeah. sides. So that's pretty big. So you go there and you fill it up with pumpkins. Oh. You get a bag and you get some apple cider and a free item for ninety nine dollars. So you can get wow. like fifteen pumpkins. Did like, you get apple cider? I did not get apple cider that's this time. I know. I was hoping that was going to be the free item, but it wasn't. Um, uh, it's, and sometimes, oh, you got the pineapple. Yeah, I got the pineapple. No, they didn't give mm. it as a choice. Mm. Um, uh, oh, you got me thinking about fresh apple cider. Mm. Oh, I know. And But it's just so cool. So if you guys are watching and you're nearby, it's also very cool because it's, it's a uh, black-owned business. They've been in business for a really long time. When you come in, like, I'm such an introvert, like, you can't introvert if it's your first time. If it's your first time, someone is going to ask you like four times if they don't recognize you, and they give you the whole little tour. They explain the bag, what goes in it. They tell you the history of it. It's just like That's they incredible. bring you into the family, kind of. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. What a blessing to have something like that, and what a wonderful community gathering place. And, and I love it. So it's like an urban farm that got built up around. 
Yep. K kind of, yeah, and it's not a farm. They do go and get things from other places. So like they, our apples come from the western part of the state, so mm -hmm. like Asheville-ish area. Mm -hmm. So he mm -hmm. contracts with other farmers. To bring things. Yeah, so I, mean, I think That's it started really out, cool. when his grandfather started out, and he was just like growing things in the backyard and then he put them up for sale at that little farm side stand and then it's just kind of grown from that. And that happens in a couple of places in our neighborhood mm -hmm. too. A couple of people will do hobby farms and they'll just we got, get extra. We got somebody that sells honey and when wow. you go walk the dog, you can just take a jar of honey and Venmo the money right there. They but there's also a guy who does tomatoes, mm -hmm. herbs, like there's, it's, it's very cool, but this is, it's like 20 minute drive and I just hadn't done it in a while, but I forgot and I was shocked that there were giant king mushrooms there, but like they had tomatillos, jalapenos. Um, wow. So a lot of times I can go there. I've gotten, um, what did I just forget? What's the cactus? Cactus pears. So I got wow. cactus pears there. So, and they have ginger. What did you do with those? What you I made a, a ninja creamy pint out of them. <laughs> How'd it turn out? It turned out really pretty good. And it was beautiful wow. color, right? Because it was the, yeah. it was the um, kind of pink prickly pear, prickly pear yeah. is what I'm trying to say, prickly pear. I knew what you were talking I, I was thinking, I think she's talking about those, yeah, prickly pears. <laughs> and Apple saying urban Arkansas. Ar Urban agriculture is fascinating. We have lots of different farms here in Vancouver. And where um, I live, so in North Carolina, is big tobacco farms. So a lot of people mm -hmm. actually retire or left IBM and different mm -hmm. big companies, tech companies, and started smaller um, farms. Yeah, so they took where they used to grow tobacco and revitalized. They, they revitalized those farms and turned them into vegetable farms. That's wonderful. And some, you know, and some are, are uh, wine, they're turning some into graperies and making Grape wineries now. Graperies, <laughs> vineyards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> I thought it was a grapery before it was a vineyard, though. I, I have no idea. We say <laughs> near like fancy that. words. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's been living in in Northern California, we're surrounded by them graperies. <laughs> <laughs> but those are actually uh, true vineyards. They're not just growing grapes. Like, yeah, got they're it, using got them it. for a purpose. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but it it is really fun because I'm I'm getting ready to do a dehydrator class. So, and I don't think you can, yeah, over there, you don't see it anywhere. She's this pile of like celery and I can peppers. see it. I was, I, I, I'm, I, it was the first thing my eye went to and I was like, oh, what's she going to be making? <laughs> I know. I want to see your dehydrator class. You know what? I, I told you my Excalibur is boxed up and ready to be sent. It's still in Austin, but I just got the Breville air fryer per your recommendation. And it has a, a dehydrator setting. So I can actually do it. And that's what I'm going to be using for some of it. I have um, a Nesco, like, you know, mm -hmm. the super cheap donut mm -hmm. one. <laughs> and um, I'm going to see how, and I do have a little Ninja fold-up toaster oven that has a dehydrator. Chances are oh, good wow. that I'm going to be using all that. I don't have a, a fancy Excalibur or anything. Mm -mm. But who knows? And what I need to find out too, maybe you're the person I should talk to when you get, is I, I want to find some of those lipped wrap uh, molds that will fit in the Breville. You mean like what the wraps that um, um, Melissa makes? Yes. Um, so that's, those are the, um, they, they're the sheets that go on the tray. Well, no, it's lipped. So it actually, oh, it's lipped. Yeah. I don't have those. No, whenever okay. I made wraps and, and stuff like that in the past, I just spread them out on the sheets that come with the Excalibur, the, you know, they're, that are for that. But well, I didn't know they made them with the lips. Yeah. And someone had said that they had gotten some that fit in the Breville because they're not going to be exactly the same size because the Breville is a little right. odd size compared to an Excalibur. So I'm, yeah. I'm curious to do that. So like the first dehydrator class I did we made bullion, we, all the powders, because I love the powder, so we made jalapeno this powder. This is a we great time of year to, to do the bullion, so I need to go. I mentioned that last night because, you know, that when you're, 
using a lot of broth for cooking and stuff, it can add up. And that's why I showed the jar of the better than bouillon, but it does have a lot of salt. So if you're trying to reduce the sodium, then you're kind of out of luck. luck. That's supposed to be low sodium, but it's still got sodium. So the doing and doing the dehydrated broth like you do is such a great way, probably, I'm guessing, to use all your bits and bobs as well, right? Kind of like making would... Yeah, like making stock. So what I usually do, so my bouillon like recipe that I do and I freeze in ice cube trays literally is like two onions, like cut in eighths, spread on the bottom of an in instant pot or slow cooker. Instant pot, you have to have, I think, a half cup of water to get it to come up to pressure. A slow cooker, I don't put any liquid in. I put sprinkle those across. I take some carrots, chop them up, some celery, chop it up. And then I'll take some fresh thyme if I have it. You don't even have to. You can put nothing else in there, but or you could add in mushrooms. You could add in whatever you happen to have. So wait, around. you can't put? Can you put the um? You can't put the Instapot on a slow cook mode and just use that because I got rid of my slow cooker. You probably can. I have not tested it. There are things it does wonky, but I, it should uh, work okay. with that. I still would add a little bit of water. Just okay. in case, um, but but you can make it in in your instant pot on a pressure cooker setting. You just have to put some water in there because it won't okay. come up to pressure without that. So if you go mm. to plantbasedinstantpot.com and look up bouillon, it'll tell you exactly what to do for the instant pot. If you okay. go to healthy slow cooking and look up bouillon, it'll tell you how to make it in your Dutch oven on the stove top or in the slow cooker. So that you can make it I'm anyway, be at this. and it's cheap. <laughs> It's super, super cheap, and that's that's yeah. the main reason. And then what after that? So if it's in the slow cooker, it makes some liquid anyhow, right? As mm -hmm. the vegetables cook down, then I just take all of that, I put it in the Vitamix with some nutritional yeast, and now I have chickeny bouillon. But I do have another powdered bouillons that I didn't do in the dehydrator. That I just kind of I think I used onion powder and garlic powder and ground celery seed and stuff like that. If you go to healthyslowcooking.com, there's a beefy bouillon, and I can't remember if I called it golden bouillon or chickeny bouillon, but if you just look at bouillons, all the things will come up. I'm gonna be going and looking at all your bouillons. And, and it's easy, the beefy bouillon is, is a little more complicated just because I'm using mushroom powder, <laughs> using some ancho chili powder, but it's, other than it being a long list of ingredients, it's not hard if you have. I want to make a big um, container of the more the chickeny one. I would do that, and I find I I kind of like the cooked bouillon a little bit better than the dry bouillon. Now I've also dried onion, celery, carrots, and some other things and ground all that up. I've dehydrated it, ground it up, and made a bouillon. And it works great, too. It's just a little more work that maybe, maybe you're willing so to the do. One, but the one in the um, Instapot, is it, does it come out more like the better than bouillon, no chicken? That It's sort of a, without the oil, obviously. It's like more of a paste? Yes, it's definitely okay. a paste. And... Um, and you can even strain some of the water away. I usually slow cook it because then it, the less liquid you have, you can always just scoop out all your stuff and just use the amount of liquid you need to blend it because there'll need to be some amount. But See, I, I, I was like, I, 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 I was like, why did I get rid of my slow cooker? No, 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 but you don't have to have it. It you was cook taking it up space and I never used it. So I gave it to somebody on my buy nothing group. But no, well, I'm sure I, I'm sure I can get another one. I'll just put an ISO out. New and I think cooker. I, yeah, and I put it down below because I'm selling a, a bundle. And if you guys are in Kathy's Cooking Club, you already have these classes. Do not buy this bundle. If you're not in Kathy's Cooking Club, this is a bargain. You're getting like five classes for forty nine dollars, and usually they're thirty five dollars each. So it's a bargain. And one of them, if you sign up now, gets filmed later this month. So you could even come to a live class and hang out. But all four, all five of the classes are kind of multi-purpose. So two of the classes that are recorded, I made stuff in the Instant Pot and gave you slow cooker directions as well. And then now we've been starting to film some things ahead of time. So the last two times I've been making them in the slow cooker 
and then giving you Instant Pot directions. And the reason is exactly our conversation right now, Lisa. Because everyone's like, oh no, I don't have an Instant Pot. Oh no, I don't have a slow cooker. It's okay, we can make things and all the, there are very few all things the that don't cross over. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So. Yeah, it's, I, and you know what I love about the this conversation is you and I are so alike that we love to give all the options. <laughs> 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 this way or you could do it this way or you could use this or you could use this or you could just that's so important I think it's very helpful uh, well and I think the thing is is that it, and I always say like sometimes you have more time than money sometimes you have more money than time and and mm -hmm. that's going to change back and forth sometimes several times throughout your life absolutely and so I'm when I telling you you can make something i'm also want to be real clear i'm not trying to shame you into doing it right and if having better than bullion is what i used to use and i know some people mm. won't use it because it's got some oil it's got some salt i don't remember if it has sugar in it or not but probably but mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know for a fact um <laughs> and when i got my first book contract because it's expensive it's quite expensive mm. And I knew if I was going to do a whole book with that, and I didn't get a very big advance, and I'm like, I'm going to spend half my advance on bullion. Actually, at that point, you probably <laughs> spent all of it on bullion. It's very possible. It was a very sad <laughs> advance. It was. I didn't well, know I any better. We don't have a Costco membership anymore, so I use my. I, I, I have my friend get stuff for me, and I pay her back. But that jar that I have is from when we had a Costco membership, and so. It's lasting me, and as much cooking as I do, it's still lasting me. That's a big jar. So that that better than bouillon, which and it's a low sodium vegetable, and it doesn't have any oil in it, is a really good value. Oh, that's great, and mm -hmm. and but it's not never, as good as making your own. <laughs> but, well, the thing is, is it would be different. Like, I think it was real. Real was kind of like, tell me why I should be making sauces, and I'm like, you maybe shouldn't be, but. I'm going to tell right. people, I'm going to give people a recipe to make date sweet and ketchup. Mm -hmm. If you can eat regular ketchup, it's probably just as cheap to buy regular ketchup as it is to buy dates and put in your ketchup, well, I, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I think we all have our priorities and our shortcuts. And that's one of the things I experienced when I was teaching classes at the Whole Foods Medical Wellness Center, because... 99.9% .9 of those people didn't have time to make all the condiments and things. So that isn't what I, I was showing them, you know, it was like how to use the condiments that you can get at a discount because you're a Whole Foods, Foods employee and create a meal that's easy, you know. So it really does depend on, and like, like what you said, sometimes you have more time and less money. Sometimes you have more money, less time. I mean, it's all going to change. It's all variable. And um, there, yeah, and there's certain things like I'd have, I have to think about that, but there are things for sure that I'm like, there's no, that's just not one I'm gonna bother making from scratch. Like for instance, I talked about yogurt last night. I made my cheese and I used store-bought plant-based yogurt. <clears throat> when I was first making that cheese, I was only making it with my homemade yogurt. But I'm like, I don't wanna be making homemade yogurt all the time. It's just too much of a pain. I don't eat it enough. I don't use it enough. So I'm just gonna buy it when I need it you know? Mm -hmm. um, and also it doesn't keep for that long. So if I don't use it right away, then I throw it out and I got to start all over again. <laughs> so, so that's just like one of those things. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to buy that. And, and it's okay. So you guys, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, if it fits with you, don't worry about it. I like, and see, I'm crazy mad scientist person. So like when we were in Sacramento, we ate, and actually I think it's over here. I haven't, haven't had time to do this, but I, I bought this and we got a suitcase so I could take it on it and the California balsamics. We did. That I got we bought a suitcase play. while we were there. <laughs> oh, is it, was this from the conference? Um, no. Well, you remember when we went to that place, um, that, that we, we got ate the Asian food afterwards? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, I have some of that. Is the that the pineapple, pineapple made fish? vegetarian the... fish sauce? Yeah. I I need to go grab my bottle. You got it. Did you get it there too? Or no? No, no, no. We have a gazillion Asian markets around here. And I've got it, but I've got a smaller bottle of it. And see, I've never seen it before. So it's what's interesting is there's some stuff in here most people would not really love. And yeah. I I got it because I'm like, I bet you I can make 
something that's going to taste like this that you can make at home because even in my because Lee Ming's is a great Asian market, but it's a little smaller. Where mm -hmm. I was to go to the farmer's market, there are two giant ones. There's an H Mart, and there's this other mm -hmm. giant store. Mm -hmm. And also, sometimes if you're in the middle of a giant store, this may not be exactly where you think it's going to be. Like, H Mart really <laughs> threw me, because they put things mm -hmm. together sometimes by country. Mm -hmm. and I yes, was like, I like that. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I think I would like it now, but I had I was buying for making Korean food, which I don't usually make. So I was mm -hmm. totally lost. But so mm -hmm. I see stuff like this. And I'm like, let's see how we can make it. And like I got some yeah. at the conference, some of the coconut California balsamics because I want to try and make some Thai food with it. Oh, great idea. So without well, the with coconut the milk. You know, with the fish sauce, I've made homemade fish sauce before, but it's another one of those things where... I use it so infrequently that I'm like, I'll just use the stuff in the bottle. Plus, you use such a little bit, so I don't really care about the nasty ingredients. You're not using too much of it, but that's just me. I'm like, I'm not, you know, but, but it is fun when you experiment with that and you know you can make it yourself. Right. And, and healthy. I like to do that. I've done a fish sauce before, and when I finally, I'm, I'm trying to make my plan for next year, and I'm going to do one project a quarter instead of because like I keep having things and they keep all going you don't move them over you don't <laughs> and so I am going to be doing my potions and powders book some point next year in some format or another but Yay. some of those sauces will be going over there and it's it's one of those things if you don't mind it then don't worry about it I know some people right. get a little bit too concerned about every teeny tiny little thing and we don't want to do that, but also it's just like, I don't know, let's see what we, there's, well, there's sucralose in this and there's some artificial colors. So maybe you can't have yes. sunset yellow FCF, you know, some people can't, <laughs> right? Well, that, I mean, that's the thing. We have all these incredible Asian markets, right? Like seriously, when you come and visit, you'll see, if you walk out my door and turn left, I mean, you can see it from my window. There's one right on the corner. It's like, and I run in there from my, they have, they actually do carry um, like organic misos along with all the other misos that you don't know what they are because you can't read the, the, the characters on it. <laughs> um, but, but like if you, any bottle you pick up, you're, it's going to have the food dye. It's going to have the, you know, sucralose and the saccharin and the MSG and all that stuff. So yeah, it's, it's not your cleanest there. They're not going to be your cleanest ingredients, but Again, for me, those are, and I don't, I stay away from a lot of them. I try to pick the ones that have the fewest ingredients and the ingredients, I know what they are. Um, and then I just don't, I, I feel like the, I don't use them enough to worry about the health consequences. I'm not cooking with them every yeah. day. So, um, you know. And but again, as, even hey, that's not to shame. Right. It's not to yeah. shame anyone who may use them too. But like, so, it's fun for me to try and see what I can make and how clean I can make it. Like, it's just kind of fun. And some things last a lot longer. So I tell you what, if I make this fish sauce, it looks, and I don't see enough vinegar or some, or because vinegar uh -huh. and sugar is really what's going to preserve something. Maybe some, some yeah. citrus juice. So if you don't have anything like that and you're making a condiment, you might as well just freeze that stuff in ice cube trays. Mm. And you can get <laughs> teaspoon, two teaspoons. And I, I have all these Ziplocs, right? And I'll say, you know, that's what I do with my bullion. I, I do like four different ice cube trays. They're about two tablespoons each. Pop them out. And then you've got a big bag of stuff. I do it with aquafaba. That's such a great Hans. idea. I need to do that. Oh, does, you know what? I don't think I've ever frozen. Have I? No, no, I did. I froze the aquafaba, faba, but I never thought about doing it in an ice cube tray. That's a great idea. Yeah, I think it works really well. And then I just, because actually we've been making a lot of soups and stews, so I'm probably going to have to make another big batch soon hmm. too. But I try to make you know, enough when, for a couple of months when I make it. One of the things I love it from the Asian market that they also sell at Trader Joe's, which is a na naughty, oily yumminess, is that, uh, when they do the crunchy onion and garlic in the sesame oil. Oh, yeah. So I'm trying to figure out a way to do that without all the oil, like doing the, you know, the 
the garlic and the dehydrated onion with the ground up sesame seeds and some other kind of base. Because you're going to get the fat from the roasted sesame seeds. Mm -hmm. So you'll get the flavor and the fat. But then what do we float that in? You really can't float it in broth. I don't know. Can you make that up? Can you create that? What about Please? the aquafaba? Yeah, I, I was thinking some aquafaba could work. Now, aquafaba is going to cut down the storage time. Oil ups the storage time well, in the fridge. Aquafaba doesn't last long. So, but what I would do is, and I don't know if, if it's crunchy, if we freeze it, will it still be crunchy or will it get... So that would be something that have to be tested. But what about this? What if you took all the dry pieces and you had a jar of the dry stuff and then you mix it with either aquafaba or soy when you sauce use it. or so you broth. you keep them separate. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Okay. Just make it like a sprinkle, like, um, oh, what's the name of that sesame salt? The Japanese sesame salt. Gomasio. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so it would be kind of like that, right? So you'd have yes. all the stuff on the separate and then use it as a top. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to try that. See, I love, I love this. My brain can solve that. My brain can't solve my entire <laughs> life today, but that I can do. You need to just start calling Lisa when you need your brain, like, like when you need to figure something out. You need to just go. Can I bounce this off of you? And I well, and I, I and Kathy, like, you're kind of my go-to whenever I'm having like a cooking conundrum. It's like WWKD. Like, what would Kathy do? And I'm like. And then I'm like, I text, I think I texted you about something recently, but you didn't get it in time and I figured it out. But I was like, Kathy's going to know how to do this. <laughs> but it took me longer to figure it out. I think it's hilarious because I just think about it. It's like my brain knows some stuff. My brain's like, mm -hmm. hmm. And I'm like, because, okay, so when I write my, like, books and stuff in the past, so you write the book and then I write the front matter last and it's always super stressful because you're like, I've got 24 hours to write all the front matter <laughs> because of me. And then, like, you get the book back later. And, you know, I'm always turning in the front matter going, oh, why did I do this? I should have taken more time, blah, blah, blah. And then I get it back and I'm like, who wrote this? This is really good. <laughs> this isn't what I said. And it's like, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. You were just a neurotic little mess. So you didn't know what anything meant. And so that's, that's when it's nice to be like this. We need to make sure that you have my information, too, so that if you're having a food emergency, you should just send that directly to me. Because, Please. you know, that phone okay. is always, like, attached to me. So. Well, and mine is always <laughs> okay. on Do Not Disturb because I kind of feel like if you don't know me well enough that you should email me before you call me, you sh I don't need to answer the phone. And it's not because of you. And like literally, I took it, I think we were going to talk a couple of days ago, and so uh -huh. I took it off of Do Not Disturb, and because I have this, I have Cheryl's hand-me-down Apple Watch, it just goes, duh, 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 duh. like people are trying, they want to pay for my student loans that don't exist, they want me to do this, and I'm like, <laughs> and they don't understand, I will take them down right now, I'm, I'm, I'm cranky Kathy, I'm not nice Kathy now, I'm not going to. Usually when people try to sell me things, I go, no, thank you, but have a good day before I hang up on them. So I try. <laughs> and now it's just I do the, you know, because now you get all these texts like that, right? And it's automatically, in all caps, stop. <laughs> like I do that five times a day. Yep. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. We've got all kinds of stuff in oh, here. Oh, wow, yeah. That I haven't even paid attention to. I'm sorry. I just like hanging out with Lisa. I think you guys like hanging out with her, too. I um, love hanging out with you. I want to be you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> you, my friend Denise Vivaldo, I used to say that to her all the time. She's a food stylist. She's a retired food stylist now, but she's amazing yeah. in California. If you ever get a chance to meet her, you must. But I would say, I want to be you when I grow up. She goes, dream bigger. <laughs> you can do better than that. And she's she's writing this like, memoir all, yeah this is a memoir about all because like she did food styling in hollywood mm -hmm. so she, she knows oh, cool. everything and every oh she's so cool like, oh she's, she's the, the person dirt. you want to have tea with yeah. and she's got Very these cool. grand stories and yeah. she's just amazing so okay video 1000 nights what are your thoughts on cooking rice and beans together in the instant pot versus separately 
Do you have any tips you want or you want me to go first? Lisa. My Instapot is mainly used for cooking rice and beans separately. <laughs> so I'm going to let you answer this one. And I think it's good. I do. So I do have some recipes in two of my cookbooks that you do them together. So what you have to decide is, is it the right bean for that rice? Or is that rice, you know, vice versa. So if you're going to cook lentils, you're going to want to cook white rice. Right. Because if you cook brown cook rice, your lentils are going to be mushy. Right. And, you know, if you're cooking, um, if you've soaked some navy beans and you're cooking brown rice, eh, it could what if go you get, wrong. What if you want kidney beans? What if you want red kidney beans? I'd have to look up in the charts, to be honest, but you probably, you could do red beans and rice. Now, if you're the person who wants, I want the beans to be just like when they came out of the can and I want my rice fluffy and separate, cook them separately. <laughs> Don't I would make like yourself, them separately. you know, because beans are I mean, are the main, the honestly, I mainly use my Instapot for just cooking my, batch cooking my beans and then like batch cooking my rice. I haven't made, honestly, very many dishes in it, which is kind of shameful because it's, you know, something that it's made to do, but I just... It's my go-to. Like I cook my, I eat a lot of chickpeas, so I just batch cook my chickpeas in it every week. Well, or and chickpeas are magic because you can cook chickpeas with any rice. Well, yeah. not oh, really. Yeah. No, you, with brown rice, I was. It'll make your white rice. It would make your white rice mushy. But I mean, yeah, those I because cook, they like, hold up. The main dishes that I make with rice and beans together are gallo pinto, which is a long grain rice with black beans. I make a mm. mujadara, which is a, mm. a long a basmati rice with lentils. And then I do, mm. um, uh, what was the other one I was gonna say? Rice and beans, rice and beans. Oh, and I make a kitchari. But oh. And kitchari so gets kitch to be like kanji, kind of, yeah? It, it is, so that one, it uh, you, you can kind of cook it all together and it doesn't matter because that's the texture of, of um, Kitchery, but with the gallo pinto, for instance, my beans are already cooked and my rice is already cooked. So I don't know if I, I would, I don't think that's something you could do. Could you? I don't know. They're already cooked. Like, and also with the mujadara, I've done it both ways, but depending on the lentils you use. And that's the stuff like when we go to the Middle Eastern restaurant. That's like the rice and the beans with the caramelized onions on top. And it's got like cinnamon in it, cumin. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so good. It is so good. Oh, and you're it, making me hungry now. And it's so inexpensive to make. Like to yes. me, and I had to make it for Thanksgiving oh, a bazillion years ago. Um, I think I was, was I 21? So it was a bazillion years ago because I thought we were going to a relative's house. My mom had passed and my dad was like, no, I'm just going to come to your house. And I was like, that'll be exciting. And I'm like, that's what I got. I, these are the things Aww. I have because stores were closed back then. You know, that was 30 some years ago. Stores weren't open on yeah. Thanksgiving. Right, um, right. That's right. They weren't. And Real says, I do make the dry bullion. That's as complicated as I'd like to get. And that is perfectly fine. You, no one ever has to do things more complicated than they want to. Yep. If the wet bullion isn't drippy, I could carry an ice cube tray to the freezer. I just can't get the tray level. And that can be an issue <laughs> um, for sure. And I can say that your trays have not always been level with the bullion and they've not like made a mess it's, it's still too yeah but what's harder is real has a visual impairment oh so she yeah so she wouldn't really know until it was too late yeah whereas i can see mm. oh i wonder if this is going to work or not you know and well I, you know they make those they make those ice cube trays with the covers on them that's true but if, you, it, if let's say if it was if it really fell over or something that could still oh, be an yeah, issue yeah, yeah. but i'm gonna say mm -hmm. if the tilt like the covers are good because if it tilts then it's, it won't drip yeah and apple says that my wet bullion is not drippy it's pureed vegetables and herbs nice and thick and i will say um 
It is nice and thick. It can be less thick in the Instant Pot because you're adding water to begin with. Mm -hmm. So mm. if you pour it all in, it's good, but it's still not like watery by any chance. It's, it's <laughs> definitely more like a vegetable puree than mm -hmm. anything <laughs> else. Um, mm. Oh, and Kathy says so, my bullion's brilliant, and she used up her last cube yesterday. Oh, wonderful. I'm inspired. Oh, and it's it's really easy. It's one of those things, once you make it, even my friends who don't make any of my recipes, they make that recipe. Um, yeah. And I, don't know, just something, I don't know why I don't. It, it seems like some of those things, one of those things I should have been making for years, I just never do. <laughs> That's how I feel about everything when I start making it. So it, it's it's not you. I feel the same way. And I'm like, oh, why did I not do this? And Apple's well, saying, real perhaps have... in a silicone uh -huh. muffin mold, so that you'd have more oh. room. And that's kind of smart too. That is smart. Yeah, yeah, that's very smart. And go ahead. And, I'm, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, I was just thinking about why, you know, like I was like, why, why is that something I haven't made? And I, I think it's because, and I talk about this a lot, like I, I learned my initial plant-based foundation was macrobiotic. And so you didn't, you, like, I didn't use bouillons. It was like miso and mm -hmm. seaweeds and tamari and seasonings and the vegetables. So it just, so you didn't actually, I never used that kind of stuff for for a long time till you know so i think that's why i never really felt the desire like i don't even remember buying bouillon f for in the first part of my journey so i think that's why i think it's the macrobiotic background you know just not required i will tell you for a fact that i didn't believe broth and bouillon was necessary like mm. i just and i still go back and forth like it definitely add something and I feel like doing it this way adds vegetable something but I used to kind of like when when I became vegetarian at 18 in 1983 the same year I of, did oh yay! you put one of those bullion cubes in there and it'd be like mm, did that really do anything I don't know <laughs> yeah. and so and so it took a long time for me to be convinced and I think maybe that's why I'm such a like bullion advocate because i i don't well, like... here's a question for you okay as you're speaking the one thing i ha i do all the time but haven't been doing it as much here in san francisco till we get a decent refrigerator um is i keep my vegetable scraps in a baggie in the freezer and then i make my own stock because it's so easy to make um but whenever i'm making it and i'm squeezing the juice out of the vegetables through the strainer I, I'm always like, can I do something with this pulp? But it's lost all its flavor, so you couldn't really use it for your bouillon or anything. No, but you could totally use it. So the, I do not save my scraps for, for broth. And the reason mm -hmm. I don't, and it's just personal, is that that's a lot of space to store. And I don't, it's that's, so much that's real why I make bouillon. No, you have to like. That's the thing. There were there were times when I had five bags of scraps in my freezer and no room for anything else. I'm like, what am I doing? So, when you're on top of it, you you make it every time a bag fills up. But you know, you got to be on it to do that. And I'm not on it enough, so I'm not doing that here at all because our freezer is tiny. But when I do, I do often. Like I'll squeeze and squeeze and squeeze till like there's like you know got all the juice, and I'm sitting there with my handful of pulp and i think it goes in the compost you know as long as you're not using like because i know some people save onion skins garlic skins like the, the outside mm -hmm. papers if you're saving that yeah. at that point don't you don't want to grind it up and put it into something else but if you're not no, saving i use the that, outer leaf yeah i don't use this skin but i do oftentimes use you know the sort of outer leaf where the texture is not as good to cook with those go in and the end well the ends go in actually so you wouldn't want to grind that up probably well i would probably so i'd open up your bag because you'd be able to pick out those ends if you wanted that's to. that's true you could, if you had skins in there that's just going to get all nasty so if you have skins right. i think this would not work for you so what i would do is i would take any of the the pieces let's say uh-huh um 
I don't know, any of the pieces that are there that are not ends or skins. And I would just, um, pure, I would try and get all the water out. So hopefully it's pretty dry. And then I would put it in the Vitamix or your food processor and process it down as small as possible. Then what I would do is use that just like you would use nut pulp, oat pulp, or okara. So you could put oh. that in a burger. So it's not going to bring a lot of flavor, but you're still adding fiber and reusing it. So you just That's might a great wanna... idea, like texture, too. Like yeah. when you need that sort of eggy kind of binder, kind of, like a binder. Yeah, and you pro probably what I would end up doing, too, when I do burgers with, with various weird stuff in it. <laughs> um, I put... <laughs> Cheryl's like, I'm not having burgers again. Oh. I'll, I'll put flax, ground flaxseed in there, too, just to kind of get it kind yeah. of to, to hold on, hold hands with each other. But I made a burger. Do you have a... And it has all this in it. Do you, <laughs> do you like, have a, a favorite... To completely go back to the beginning of your conversation, do you have a favorite uh, dehydrated wrap recipe that you're making right now? No, I've never made one, and I want to. So that's why I want to find one of those lipped contain lip things. Oh, got I, it. Okay. I need to sit in. Um, although Apple was saying earlier that somewhere around in here that I could make there. yeah sil on silicone sheets in the. I made Lisa's wraps on silicone sheets and in the lip tray. The sheet without the lip works. So I'll look into right. that and see how that works. But I, I mean, I haven't made them in years. But I and I was trying to find Melissa's recipe. I know she she was on Chef AJ recently, and um, I know she made them, but I didn't really see anywhere where she put the like uh, proportions in, like the measurements. It's in her ebook. Yes, I know, but she went on Chef AJ and demoed one recently. But she didn't give away the proportions, I don't think. I that didn't I, see them. I'm sure it's not written down. I'm sure it was go get the ebook. But if okay. you, I don't know if she mentioned the measurements as she went along. But okay. it was on and sale. Then, um, I did get the ebook. They but weren't, I made there it. weren't any in the bundle, right? Last year, uh, recipes for wraps? I don't think so. I, didn't, I don't I was think looking. so. Mm -hmm. I think this was something she did this year. But right. a lot okay. of people, and they're very popular right now, for sure. Yes. I know AJ loves them. You know, David and I were raw. Back before our son was born, we were raw. I think I told you the story. I was. We were raw and, like, glowing and just, like, marveling at the flavor of a spinach leaf because we were so pure, you know. And uh, But then I got pregnant, and I, the nausea kicked it was like all over, no more raw food. But um, but at the time, you know, we were doing classes with like David Wolf and Matt Amston and all these raw foodists. And I got to tell you, and there was a raw restaurant in LA at the time, Giuliano. He had the, his raw restaurant and food was really fabulous. Um, but man, doing things like that, like it was a lot of work. If you weren't just eating a salad or, you know, I don't know, like I was making raw granola. I was making this and that you know you first you're soaking it and sprouting it and then dehydrating it's a lot of work yeah. yeah oh who's talking is it someone's talking to our dog I'm like oh it's making him bark um <laughs> ts is saying what's the difference between bullion and broth and it's easy bullion is like a paste that you add water to to make broth or mm -hmm. broth is something you take all these scraps and you put water in it and so but broth is always mostly water bullion is always either a powder or a paste a concentrate a, a concentrate yeah it took me a while Great to question. get to that word <laughs> but I, I managed <laughs> um and oh and Ellen said super cubes have covers and they're silicone so things don't stick. And I do use that for some bullion too. But don't let a sticker shock stop you from making bullion. Those free ice cube trays someone put on, you know, buy nothing group work just fine. They work just fine. Yeah. So um, Kathy says Aldi has mushrooms for 99 cents. So I bought 10 packages as you should. And Ooh. I'm thinking of adding Wait, what kind of mushroom? 
Um, I suspect they're button. Ah, okay. Because all these doesn't usually do too many exotic things. And is thinking of adding mushrooms to the bullion. What do you think? I think it works. I think it'll work. Oh, great. yes. Yep. I um, love a good mush, And I love a good mushroom bouillon, actually. I love the straight up mushroom bouillons. They're some of my favorite. It's, it's really yummy. And I make mushroom powder. So whenever I get um, regular mushrooms and actually... These shiitakes are small. The last shiitakes I got at the Asian market had just giant stems, like unwieldy. So I just ripped those yeah. suckers right off, <laughs> made a big pile, and then I cut them in half and I put them in the dehydrator and ground them up. And so I had a, like a cup of powder from them and mushroom powder. Oh okay, Kathy, you do know that every time I'm cooking and I eat mushrooms every week, I get them at the farmer's market. And every time I'm putting those little stems in the compost, I think of you and this guilt washes over me. <laughs> this is going to be, this is going to be the week that I don't do that. <laughs> just put them in the freezer or something. I know my freezer's so tiny. I just, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to just say, so if I don't freeze them, let's say I'm like really ambitious. I've got all these mushroom stems, right? I just made my, whatever, my pasta or my soup. So I take the stems and I'm just going to dehydrate them. I can put them right in the water, right? Dehydrate right them. In the and, gravel. Then, and then grind, yeah. grind them up. That's it. Done. Right. Yeah. Okay. This is the week. I'm not going to feel guilty <gasps> and I'm not going to compost my mushroom stems. <laughs> I don't want any of you to feel guilty, but I just like, you know, I love it's something It's me free. guilty. It's not you. But I just, I just it's think it's free. Of you. <laughs> like, so like when we were in um, Massachusetts, so like when we did that conference, we had, we weren't able to eat dinner the night that they gave us uh, an Amesbury gift card. So we had $60 <laughs> on those gift cards. And you know what we were spending before we left Amesbury the next morning. I'm like, mm -mm. we're waiting until the store comes open. And we found actually this health food store. We got some amazing snacks yeah. for the trip and this beautiful food that they made there. Like, I didn't even know it existed. But I was wow. like, even if we're getting expensive maple syrup from some store. So I, I just can't, some things I can't let go. So mushroom stems are a little like that for me. I get really <laughs> sad. Like, I, I have to admit, and I'll admit this publicly. Let's see if we can see. I bought a big thing of, of tomato powder. And the reason is, <gasps> is that, that this year I grew my own tomatoes. And so I only had like six tomato plants. And I ate them all. I even ate the little ones, which usually how I ended up starting making mushroom powders. I don't like those, um, those little cherry tomatoes because you bite in them and they squirt at you. And I feel like they're fighting with you. It's, it's, it doesn't make me happy. So I'm like, fine. Cause and if you have a CSA, you're going to get some every week, Absolutely. sometimes too. So I just cut, yeah. cut them up, cut them in half, put them in the dehydrator, make tomato powder. And I finally ran out. And so I've got this big thing of tomato powder. And Marilyn was telling me, and I, I'm going to go over these measurements. I don't, I would tell you, but I don't remember. But there's a measurement for making tomato paste, a measurement for making tomato sauce, and tomato juice from that, from tomato mm. powder. I'm all in on the tomato juice. So we're going to try it. She even gave me some um, hints of some stuff to add to make it where you will like it. Okay. So that'll be exciting. Um, Sugar and salt, I'm sure. <laughs> possible. I'm getting hungry here thinking about all these things. Justine oh said if you ha had to choose between the bouillon from the Instant Pot or the dry mix to use in a, a recipe, which one would you choose? Whichever one was closer and easier to me. So I'll tell you what, if, <laughs> if, if all the bullion, if I looked in there and I only had one bullion cube and I needed three and then I look over here and I've got a jar of it, that's what I would use. Yeah. I it, just, I don't care. Yeah. yeah. As long as it required yeah. her to not have to go to the downstairs freezer, she would grab whatever was up here. <laughs> yes. And so, and I think it's just whatever you like more. So I think the dry bullion I have up here like I said, is, is mostly nutritional yeast. It's going to probably have some um, rolled oats for substance and some spices. So it probably is like poultry oh, wow. spice, onion powder, garlic powder, stuff like that. And the it's rolled so oats, that's a wild card. I like that. I kind of feel like it's my signature wild card. It, <laughs> it totally point. is. Yeah. 
Yeah. You are the queen of oats. You've got the oats going in a lot of things. I want, I want a little tiara that says queen of oats. We should have got you a little crown when we were at the Ren Fair. We should. <laughs> Yeah, only if it says Queen of Oats, though. I don't want a regular, a regular. But you power. just made a really good point, and it's whatever is going to um, encourage you to do the thing that you're trying to do. Like whatever's easiest. What is it that Chef AJ says? The least restrictive to meet your goals. It's kind of yeah. like that thought process, right? Whatever's going to work best for you. Because I used to be very strict about like not cooking in Teflon or microwaves. And I'm like, that doesn't fly anymore. It's like, no, if that's going to help get to the end goal, which is to eat the plant-based meal, then I'm going to do it. Right. And, and Dr. McDougall feels kind of that way too. He doesn't want you cooking in aluminum, but also if there's stuff over that aluminum, he's not too worried about yeah. it. Yeah. Aluminum is another story. That That's, that's, he link. no, no aluminum. I know someone's <laughs> going to bring it up. So I'm just like nipping that, nip. Yes, yes, thank you. I hadn't thought about that, but that's, yeah, that's one of those things that's just kind of a given. I don't even think about it. But, right. but like, you know, I get a lot of those questions when I'm teaching and when I'm coaching or like I'll be doing a cooking demo and, you know, I didn't own a microwave for years. Like when I was macrobiotic, every time I defrosted something, it went in the steamer or reheated it. It was went in the steamer, you know, never had a microwave, but I'm like, Microwaves aren't a big deal at all. You just use it, you defrost, whatever. I gave a whole microwave cooking class at Whole Foods because there were people who actually wouldn't cook in their oven or stove. Yeah. She likes to cook in the microwave. So, when we're we were first together. I, what you've got. Right. right. I made her put it on like the sun porch. Yeah, I, wouldn't I couldn't even have the, the microwave in the house. But now I, it was already here. So I'm like, I've given up now. I'm like, okay. what? Because <laughs> yeah. I think the thing is, is it's not about... For most people, it's not about being perfect. It's not about being, you know, there is no uber clean, like gold that you get and you get a crown that says you won, right? <laughs> it's, sometimes your stomach just needs dinner and we try to have things around the best we can. That's why, it, so if you go to um, healthyslowcooking.com too, I'm pretty sure I have like my oat Parmesan. I have like, I don't know if my creamy sauce mix is there, my white gravy mix is there. And like, it's it's almost silly to call it a recipe. And I think it has three ingredients and one of them's oats. Shocker. But Are you ever gonna put everything into one book? Like you need to have like the Kathy has home of cooking. You've got it like, you need to publish like, you know, like Issa Moskowitz has, you know, her giant books, Issa does it and super fun times and like these, like you need to have that definitive Kathy Hester cookbook. Where is it? it, it it's could, right here. It could be coming. <laughs> we'll see. I, that's why I'm one project a quarter is where we're going next year. But she actually tried to start that project several years oh ago, gosh, but it was, yeah. um, but, but the potions and powders instant. are a start. So it could yeah. be end up being a smaller series instead of one big book, but I haven't decided yet. Well, I feel like you can kind of take the ones you've got and and you've already got a good foundation for your book. Then you just need oh, to yeah. add some things to it. I've tested a bunch. So some of these things were already in testing when things got yeah. rearranged. Um, and like Outrageous Oatmeals, while it's out of print for the paperback, now the way publishers work, for perpetuity, they're gonna be selling the ebook. But I should be able to do another oat, oat book because it went out of print is, is the theory. But there's some things that make it a little harder that I have to do workarounds from the books that I did do. Legal. But it's, huh? Because of legal contract yeah. stuff. Yeah. It, and it's kind of, stuff is weirder now than it was before. It used to be if your book isn't sitting on a shelf at Barnes & Noble next to this new book, you're probably okay, but now it's the Wild West, right? And that's a yes. little, little reason why I'm doing some eBooks, which I know people want me to do a paperback, and I'm trying to help you learn why you don't want me to do a paperback, <laughs> because it is beneficial to your pocketbook, and you can print it out at home, just like the Ninja Creamy eBook. You print that Absolutely. puppy out at home, double double-sided, and you pay $5 at Staples, and now you have Absolutely. something you can use. Yeah. Um, but 
But no, Absolutely. no, it, it is important for me to do. And when I wanted to do kind of my staples book a long time ago, it was actually the same time that Miyoko was doing her pantry book and we have the oh. same agent. So they couldn't I wrap have... both books. Oh, <laughs> Aww. but you're but so different than hers. It they would, but it's going to be great now. It's right. going to be That's better true. now because yeah. it's had, yeah. you know, I'm much like I've always had a staple chapters in all of my books, but I think that I'm kind of fine tuning some things a little mm-hmm. bit more, too. And I think my my methodology is a little more solid. Well, and with us eating the starch solution, it's also um, giving you more ideas to things to do. So. That's what people say, but honestly, I've been cooking for people whole food, plant-based, no oil since 2010, you know, mm-hmm. and with when I became more aware of, of Chef AJ's and SOS and SOFAs, I also added options for most things for those people or you yeah. people or all of us now, mm-hmm. um, just because if, if people were coming over, that's how I'd feed them. Mm-hmm. So... Um, and just to answer your question, Lisa, about no, she did not give away her proportions, says Ellen. Apple says her wraps book was in the raw vegan bundle, so not Chef AJ's bundle. But I think oh, Chef AJ okay. sold that. Thank you. Thank and you. And there was a decent discount for her ebook. And Apple says Chef AJ had another guest who, Zuzana, who made raw wraps. I use her recipe all the time. The videos on Chef AJ's channel, raw vegan sweet potato wraps. Oh, thank you. And hey, Mona, it's awesome to see you. It was great seeing you last night at Lisa's class too. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm, hi, Mona. And let me see, I'm trying to look through, the, there's a lot of comments and I realize it's about 2.15. Is Faith, do you know what time Faith is coming over? 2.20. Oh, okay. So I feel less stressed now. I told her we'd come out when <laughs> Okay, because I'm like, um, oh, and Mona said she didn't get last night's recipes, and she really wants the cheese and the tofurkey. Um, okay, yeah, they're, I'm not sure I'll have to ask my tech guy, but I thought that everybody got the newsletter that had the the link with all the recipes on it, but I'll, I'll make sure everybody gets it. And Lisa, what I would do if I were you. Mm-hmm. Yes, please. Is I would, <laughs> I would go back to that video and in the description at the top, put in the link where they have to sign up to get those recipes automatically sent to them. So even if they sign okay. up before, let them sign up again. Cause like sometimes if I do, I don't know if I give away something else free, like I usually do on the holidays, even if you're on my mailing list, you still have to fill out the form to get that thing. doesn't mean yeah. you get two email newsletters or anything. Mm-hmm. So Got it. I, okay. I would do that. And that also, that would mean anyone who finds their way there, uh-huh. you can do it automatically. Great. Oh, well, yeah. Great. Uh-huh. Oh, you go ahead. I'm so sorry. Oh no, I was really impressed with the way David, my tech guy did it. <laughs> Because he had them, you know, we tagged them all. And then, anyway, you, you already know this stuff. But I was like, oh, this is great. This is very impressive. <laughs> That's awesome. Look, Cheryl, you need to do email, too, now. Thanks, David. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him yeah, I really Mailchimp, appreciate him. <laughs> I put, I, you know, I put the content in, and then he makes it look fabulous and creates all the magic. So you guys need to get together. Oh, but you won't let me do that. Well, no. So- We'll talk about he that needs later. to learn from you, Cheryl, though. There's some tricks you've got up your sleeve, and he's he's been like, ah, oh, yeah, i got to learn how to do that. <laughs> yeah, Cheryl, Cheryl's the e person. Uh, trial, by, trial by fire really is the way you learn this stuff. It, yeah. It always gets right. better. You look at this upward trajectory. It's just like when you're <laughs> cooking. You know, at first you're like, woohoo, rice, and it's not burnt. And it's the best day ever. <laughs> and then another day, it's not okay, right? So we're always getting better and better. Uh, Patsy says, how long do you dehydrate and temperature for mushrooms and tomatoes? And I'm going to see. <laughs> Let's see. What's muscle memory? 
I she think is looking at the about 125 gravel. is what I usually do. And with when you're dehydrating these things that you're going to make into powders, they need to be quite brittle. So is it overnight me, or at you... least overnight? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it kind of depends on the thing. Like, okay, so there have been some cherry tomatoes that were looking pretty sad and wrinkly and dehydrated. So it didn't take them as long as like the fresh squishy ones. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But you can't. Unlike cooking something, you can't dehydrate it too long, especially if you're making a powder from it. It's different if you're trying to make like a wrap. I would assume right. a wrap you could dehydrate until it's just hard as a rock. Crispy. Yeah, right. <laughs> you're and you're making you're, chips. <laughs> but if you're doing going for like mushrooms or anything you're going to powder, the crispier the better. So if you want to dehydrate yeah. it for two days, it's not going to hurt anything. Sure. And, and usually what I do is I'll throw them in and I'll put them... Like, let's say if it was now, I'd probably put it in for six or eight hours. And then I'd look at it before I go to bed. And I, if it didn't look perfect, I'd be like, see you in eight hours. And I'll right. check again. <laughs> but there are times that I've had some stuff for two days. Because it's humid where yeah. I live. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if it stopped for a few minutes, enough for humidity to creep in somewhere, then I kind of have to start again. So mm -hmm. then you want to put it in something airtight um i did get a tip from maryland when i was talking to her that i have not done so when you make a powder let it cool all the way down so let it wait for a while then put it in the jar because in the cooling down process it can it can retain some moisture which is very oh. interesting wait you, you want it to retain so wait, no 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 because no, it'll get moldy no so you you yeah, so you, cool want, it. you need to cool it down so it stays dry, in other words. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because if not, it'll retain moisture. Oh, okay. Did I Got say it. it backwards? Or did, was I kind just of. confusing? Kind of. It was kind of, but I think you Sorry. just added, I think you just left out some words. It was all. Okay, that's very possible. <laughs> but I got it, what you were trying to say, because, you know. <laughs> Y'all have that like brain thing going on. <laughs> Oh, uh, Mona says, I'm far from a purist. Yes, I use parchment paper and my microwave. Mm -hmm. And there's there's nothing wrong with it. And that's what Thursdays are about. It's just being okay being you and doing what Wait, you we, can do. Par, is parchment paper in the microwave bad? Some people go, <laughs> oh, well, there's some chemicals on the parchment paper. And some people go, ooh, oh, microwaves. We don't really, you know, so... And it's okay. And, you know, and here's, here's a really great um, question. That's for you, what? Lisa. This one? Yeah, I think it's for Lisa. Let's hear. She was talking about it. Okay. I don't think, I think it was me talking about it, but Plants Only Muncher says, why cut off the mushroom stems? Oh, maybe it is. It's for both of us, isn't it? it? I eat the whole well, mushroom. I'm, it depends on the mushroom. Like, so with the shiitakes, they're usually pretty tough to include with the mushroom when you're slicing them up so right i don't i don't think i've ever been well, able to slice i mean sometimes if it's a big well, fat one like like from the farmer's market i got some with bigger stems but the tent stems stems seem to be tough what's that that's a i'm sorry i'm trying to see can, is this one that's good? a button yeah. is that, no it's a little shiitake i think oh it's a shiitake uh-huh um it's a little dried out. Um, and you could get a little bit of this in, but usually what I do is I don't care that I'm getting the stem and that's kind of a weird uh -huh. pulling it all into your mouth and I just pop it out. You can use a knife. That's what I do. I do that as well because the stems tend to be tough on the shiitakes. So an answer but, to that question, yeah. But with like a button well, mushroom yeah. or carmini, I would use the stem. Um, I don't use the stem typically on the um, portobellos because uh, the, they tend to be tough. So it really depends on the mushroom, I think. And like last night when I was shredding the trumpets to make the chickeny stuff, the tips don't really shred, so I'll just chop those up and put them in. Um, but there's no real stem. on The stem is the mushroom kind of in a trumpet. So I think it, it depends on the mushroom, I would say. Well, and there's not, if you're using something and you're happy with it, there's not yeah. like a real reason. But like a lot of times, at, even when I get mushrooms from Costco too, like I don't, as long as I get my little mushroom caps, 
I don't mm -hmm. really need the stem part of that to like put on things. And mm -hmm. I just use it as a way to give me some free mushroom. If you're like, yeah. I never want to make mushroom powder, then there's no reason for you to do that. You, but, <laughs> but mushroom powder just really can, you know, like, let's say you're making a, a beefy stew with mushrooms and potatoes and carrots. Even adding a little bit of mushroom powder in there can really just make mm -hmm. it sing, right? Yeah, but I think that was a great question because it, cause you, for most of, like, it's, it's, it's actually a similar question to, like, some people peel their carrots. I don't peel my carrots when I put them in, like, last night in the chicken dumplings. Or, like, ginger. I was doing a big food demo, and I was showing everyone how to take the spoon, to ginger, right? And everyone's like, you don't need to peel the ginger. I'm like, well, you don't use the ginger peel. But for the particular thing I was making, which was a sauce, I didn't want the texture of the skin in my my sauce, so I did. I peeled it. But like, if I were doing a stir fry or something, I'd probably just leave the skin on. So it really depends on what you're making, and personal preference. Absolutely, because I just take my whole ginger and I throw them in the in a bag in the freezer. Mm -hmm. Like someone told me about that. And so, like, yeah. then if I'm doing, because I'm going to be making, like, some slow cooker Asian thing, I haven't decided, that's why it's still thing. <laughs> and I'll just grate some of the ginger skin and all in there. Right. But right. there are other that, times. Yeah, well, you just don't want the texture, right? So, yeah, personal preference. And I think it's good just to kind of keep an ear open and hear what other people are doing. And if it's just like, well, that's too much work, then let it go for right now. And you may turn around just like Lisa's going to and make your own mushroom powder before it's all said and done. <laughs> <laughs> so milk it be. <laughs> you wait till you see me next week. I'm going to be like, look at my mushroom powder. And the thing is, is your first mushroom powder is like two tablespoons. You do all that. As, as I was saying it, I'm like, who am I kidding? It's going to be like. Here's my spoonful of mushroom powder. <laughs> but the thing is, is I, and I just want, you know, like when you're dehydrating stuff, that's hands-off time. You do not need, you don't even have to be in the house. Like, obviously, Absolutely. again, my rule of thumb is you have a new appliance or you got a new to you appliance from a friend or the thrift store, you need to be home the first time you use it to make sure it's yeah. not broken. After you know that it's not broken, like, I put stuff in the dehydrator and I go do all my errands yeah. and, or do stuff here. I don't think about it again for 10 hours. They shall yeah. leave me sitting in here with jalapenos or something dehydrating and all of a sudden <laughs> I'm like, my eyes are watering and I'm trying to figure out what's going on because I can't breathe. I'm like, geez, what is going on? Dogs coming up going, what's going on, you know? Well, it's good for your allergies. <laughs> I do that with the ancho all the time. And actually, I was teaching a cooking segment when um, Howard and Howard jo uh, Jacobson and Josh Lajani were doing a sick to fit thing. And I did the food part. And so I was showing them how to make chili powder. And so you, you get dried ancho chilies and guajillo. And you could use other ones, but I just use a blend of those two. But Ugh. feel free those, those are both mild but you take mm -hmm. the stems ribs and seeds out and now right. i actually almost julienne them with um scissors and pour a little boiling uh -huh. well if i'm using them for sauce i'll pour boiling water on them if i'm not then i put them like that in the dehydrator so they go faster and make a powder but there is even though they're not spicy, they will make your eyes water and all that. And so I almost ran us all out of the whole house because we got three different <laughs> toaster ovens in this back room doing it. And I was back there with Mia, Howard's wife, and we were like, oh, I don't know if this is a good idea. <laughs> but then we all got chili powder. And we're like, this was a great idea because the chili powder you get from stuff like that tastes so much better yeah and if you ha if you are able to and you have a hispanic store near you uh, walmart has them as well but a hispanic store you can get them in bulk and it's so much fresher it's so much cheaper that like oh you can gosh. go somewhere and get yeah. pay ten dollars for a little bottle of ancho chili powder that's like one pepper yeah yeah, yeah. 
Now we live near the mission. I'm not near, but we've got the mission here. And I recently um, made enchiladas with a mole Ooh. and mole is something you can make, but they have these fresh packs of homemade authentic mole that is so good, but they have like every dried pepper imaginable. They're super inexpensive. Like I can get those ingredients super cheap. Even on Clement street here, there's a couple of markets that have all that stuff. So I feel very fortunate to have access to that. Cause if you go into whole foods or you go online, you're going to spend a lot more money on those ingredients. And here they they just have them all the time and they're fresh, freshly made, you know, same thing with like tomatillos, jalapenos, limes are usually close to half the price at Hispanic market yes. than at a yes. regular supermarket. And then you have Absolutely. Whole Foods where it's like $5 a pound for tomatillos or something. Right. Ridiculous. <laughs> Which is crazy. No. <laughs> I was going to get a celery root or celerac. And it, it wasn't uh -huh. this big, but celeracs are pretty big anyhow. And I thought it was per piece. So I usually only buy them per piece, never when they're per pound. It was going to be $12 for that celerac. <laughs> That is ridiculous. And I was like, I'm I, I try no. never to make, be a bother in line, but I was like, yes, no, we're no, not no, no, getting no, that no. one. I will not pay that. You know what, Derek, um, those, that's another one. He does rutabagas, celiac, 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 however you say I'd it. I'd say celerac, but I'm probably celerac. wrong. Celery root yeah. is also correct, and that's there a good go. one. Celery root, but he does, so what I was describing earlier with the roasting of the whole thing where he creates like a a deli slice thing uh that's another one he uses i'm pretty sure i'm gonna have to look that up and because this is definitely like ham sized uh, that's what i'm thinking <laughs> yeah <laughs> and hopefully it's like not rotten in there i mean it feels very good it, it definitely has bizarre. some okay. creases in there but i'm that would be so cool um, you are going to create whatever you create with it. I'm excited. Whatever it is. It's dirty. <laughs> yeah, it is dirty. It was, it was came out of the ground. <laughs> Those are your B vitamins. Those are your B vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. If I do something with it, I'll like be like, we've got to go back to the market to get the other one. <laughs> but I should. Well, now, yeah, because then now I'm going to be like looking for the head sized rutabagas. <laughs> Kathy, that's what she used. I've got to go get one. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you don't have head size ones? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> well, what's so funny is rutabagas and turnips, again, were like food of the people. And so now right. because people aren't really eating them that much, now they're becoming specialty groceries. Right. <laughs> you right. know, and our grandmas <laughs> and great grandmas would be smacking us if we spent like seven dollars on a rutabaga. Mm -hmm. Oh, right? my gosh. Yeah. No, this and was a, this was, yeah, peasant food. And delicious, delicious food. Yeah. Um, Justine saying glad to hear me yeah. say that about the dehydration, like it takes as long as it takes. I dehydrated right. orange slices in my Ninja Foodie and it took forever. Made a lovely and yummy orange powder though. And I have totally, I'm uh, in the class I made orange, lemon, lime powders separately that you can mix together. Strawberry powders. Um, Ooh. Yeah. And those are really nice for cocktails because you can rim your glasses with it or sprinkle it. Have you do done beet powder? I haven't, but um, I probably it's will. really expensive to buy. It is. I got. I did get a bag at Ross's or Home Goods or something, but it was more yeah, than I, got I really one wanted to pay. That's the discount place. I have one, and I use. It's going to last me probably the rest of my life. <laughs> so, you know, I don't use a lot at a time, but I was. But it is. But it can be expensive. So if that's it. That's a. I would think a good one to dehydrate, especially if you only need a little bit, right? Because you could just. Slice up your beet, dehydrate it, and then grind it, and you've got enough beet powder for your dish. Exactly. And, like, having a good spice grinder is really, really worth it. Yeah. Um, and I use the one that goes on the Ninja, though I think my Ninja motor may be dying a little bit because I'm not kind to it. You know, I just I do get... everything in my Nutribullet, my little Nutribullet. I got the Beast, and I'll, I'll bring this back out again. We did something with it recently, but it was on sale at Costco. Yeah. And then, oh wow! 
and it has like a thousand watt motor so it's like oh God, you're just, such a bad influence it was at costco <laughs> it was like forty dollars off it's like 120 dollars or something it's got three different si smaller sized vessels but i don't and think what, you can do dry all for grinding oh oh, oh. so it's just like it's, a little it's blending but so it's got these four and then it's got two underneath my friend wow. Hedron, Hedron, Hedron talked me Hydron, into it. Hydron, 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 Hydron got one, and we were talking about it when we were visiting her in Connecticut, and, and she talked me into it. Yeah, she was totally like, "Oh yeah." And I've only one. done one or two things in it, but it says you're supposed to put liquids, so I, I'm, I'm probably gonna try to put something dry in it anyhow and see what happens. <laughs> Let's just you be rebel. Real. Um, <laughs> but I'm also may need to, the reason I wanted to use the Ninja Blender because I. I love having a Vitamix, but I hate the idea, like when I didn't have one, if someone said it called for a Vitamix, I was just angry at the person who developed the <laughs> recipe because, no, I'm not buying a $400 appliance to make your soup. <laughs> I'll make my own soup, thank you. So oh, I, I, have a, I, I was shamed about the Vitamix. It was like many years ago in Austin and I was at this vegan festival and Issa, who's one of my heroes, was doing a cooking demo and I brought up the Vitamix because I had gotten one and I was like oh, like so excited. I was like making everything with my Vitamix. And I kind of got shamed for like, because you know, she's post-punk kitchen. You don't, you, you know, you're supposed to be able to cook all this without any expensive appliances. And I was kind of shamed at the conference in front of all these people because, and I can't remember what I brought. I asked a question about using the Vitamix for it. And it was kind of like, we don't use Vitamixes. No one can afford those. <laughs> well, and the thing is, is sometimes you can get those things used on Facebook Marketplace. Or Which I learned it from, your friend. from you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and I got it because we, when Cheryl and I could dig together, this is, this is actually a pretty funny story. So I had to institute she doesn't buy a lot of crazy things. Obviously, the business buys a lot of crazy things, right? Because I have to try all these things. But I had had one TV and then it, it was, was like a 19-inch no. television. But this, okay, that was my new TV that was only like two years old. The TV I'd had before that I'd had for like 10, 15 years. And then it wasn't going to work anymore. So I had to get a new TV. And then she's like, okay, I want a bigger TV. I'm like, okay, you can have a bigger TV. Now, she, obviously, she's buying it. And um, then the next year, she's like, oh, I want this bigger TV. And I'm like, we have a TV. <laughs> and then she made some convincing argument. We are the worst, and we can convince anyone of anything. And so then finally, like when we had a TV in all the rooms, I was like, okay, this, t this is your last TV for five years. Five years, and and not only five years, or did I say three? I think I was kind. No, you said five. Okay, I was probably going to give it. You said three. five, and you said even yeah. if they develop holographic TVs that let you be in Star Wars, you are not getting another one for five years. <laughs> That's amazing. Right? Because I knew it was going to come up. I knew that was the <laughs> argument that was going to happen. I was wrong. I predicted the future wrong. This is why I don't invest in companies and things like that. But then she's like, I really want this TV. Like, I think it was three years in. I really, really want it. Blah, 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 blah. Because, like, there's things like you sell the old TVs. Those are gone. You could have a new one. Like, that's not in the five-year plan because she's really good about selling things and getting her money back from them. But, um, so I went, we're at Costco, she wants this TV, and I'm like, well, you could have it if you buy me a Vitamix, which I thought was ridiculous. <laughs> you may buy your $500 TV because you're buying me a $500 blender. Yeah, but that, five, right? that $500 TV was $750 off, so. <laughs> but anyhow, that's how I got it. a Vitamix, right. for real, like, so I'm like. That's all right, you can have a TV if you buy me a Vitamix. There you go. And so, and and I do recommend buying those kind of larger ticket appliances at Costco if you can. Yes. I know Vitamix. I has got my first one at Costco. Did you? It Vitamix mm -hmm. does replace a lot of stuff, and I've heard a lot of great stories. However, like 
the motor was just making starting to make a little bit of a funny sound it was obviously not going well so i went to costco and i had bought it like eight years before that i wasn't that long it, it was pretty they exchanged long it did they exchange it i didn't have a receipt i'm on a new costco thing so they had to like go and look up different memberships I had had. They looked it all up, they found it, and they gave me cash money to go back in the back, grab another Vitamix, and pay my $50 to upgrade. Amazing. Yeah, so, so it's totally worth it. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, and someone was talking about the Beast too. Um, oh, Ronnie says it did a great job grinding my black cumin seeds. That's great. Oh. Um, so I will try that. And Marilyn's saying I, she was at Costco yesterday and the Beast is still $40 off. And and I'll, I'm going to do a proper video. I'm yeah. sorry. Well, and one of the things I'm about behind. getting it at Costco is it comes with all the containers. Well, and it has these little things that you can, I don't know, walk around and hold them. They like little holdy things. But like these are so really is it good just like sizes. A super duper so it's like a high powered blender that's really smart because they've got all the different size containers. And it's small. Yeah. It's just really small. So, so would you say, so you would you use that instead of the Vitamix? Like, what do you see that? that this, the small amounts, like it's impossible to do small amounts in the Vitamix. That's like, why look I at this container. This, this is yeah, like. I use the Nutribullet for the small stuff. Well, see, the Ninja, the Ninja that we have is already, like, when you turn it on now, it has this. It's, yeah, it's, it's, on it's about to go. Days. It's, it's going to die any day now. So. And so, and I probably will get another one because I, I this is the, this will be the third Ninja I've had. Mm -hmm. but I, I use my Spice Grinder attachment because the Ninja is higher powered than a Spice Grinder. So it does a great job. I want to try okay. these. Like, so I also, for the Vitamix. Somebody gave me, somebody on the Buy Nothing group gave me a Ninja and I didn't really ever get the hang of it and see this is like the smallest container for a regular Vitamix right and I got one of these at the thrift store but these are pretty expensive oh. yeah um, it's a hundred dollars for that one in your left hand I think if you bought that on its own yeah yeah so yeah. and this whole this whole um, beast blender thing is like i think it's 119 with all of these things for the small things so it just depends on what you're doing i have a whole bunch of ninja containers i have ninja containers from this one ninja container from the other one that i gave away and i'm i may this is the smart torque and what i would say it's not that the ninja is bad either i would get another one it's just that i'm really hard on it you know, yeah. I'm making all yeah. these powders, all these different things. And sometimes I'm like, hey, that's probably dry enough. No, it's yeah, not. yeah, yeah. No, I'm really hard on my my stuff like that, too. I, and, and like us, we use them all the time, right? Like daily. So they get a lot of wear and tear. And Lydia likes her Nutribullet for smaller portions. And there's nothing wrong. And, and I know I, I found out about the beast late. I'm late to this. So evidently all the cool influencers have been talking about it for like a year. And I just didn't know. And, and my friend was telling me about it. And then I actually went ahead and bought it at Costco. Instead of $1.99, it was $1.49. And then like three days later, it got $30 off. And I was not happy. So $40 off. $40 off. So Cheryl went with me to the customer service and they just looked at my thing and they're like, here's $40. Well, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So wait, this time of year, isn't a lot of that stuff on sale at Costco? Yeah. Yeah. So basically Costco's thing is if you've purchased it within 30 days and the price goes down, if you go up to the customer service desk, they can look it up on your account and then they see the purchase and then if it's on sale, and it's within that 30 days, they will give you the difference, either back on yeah, I'm your looking at it method right of now. purchase. It says it's, I'm looking at it right now, it's one nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, and I'll tell, I haven't run it through all its paces. I did use it on Chef AJ's show. I, the reason I didn't use it for all of them is because I thought somehow I was gonna go 
the big one, then the smaller one, and I realized, no, that last recipe is bigger than all of these. Mm -hmm. So, um, wow. and Ronnie says another thing she likes about the Beast as opposed to the Nutribullet is that it automatically grinds blends for 60 seconds. So you can hold the button down and it'll just do it and you can let go, but you don't have to stand there and press the button. And that can, that can matter if you're having some arthritis or some different things. Absolutely. Well, my Nutribullet is on its last legs. I mean, it's really like, like, you know, the little rubber things inside that a couple of them are missing. Cause like, it's like, and it's so gross. It gets really gross in there, you know? So, I'm glad you said it because I'm like, as you're saying that, I'm like, I wish mine would fall out because it's nasty. Because that's, <laughs> that's the thing about, how, this is why I'm kind of interested in this. So even though this kind of works the same in that it comes like this, right? Yeah. And then it comes upside down. So what happens is then when you blend a second time, stuff leaks out of the vitamin, or the, my the ninja. ninja. And maybe yeah, the Nutribullet too. And we'll see it if it happens with this. But okay. it's that's just the danger that we have. That, mm -hmm. That's how we like our Indiana Jones in the kitchen. Well, we uh, should probably yeah, wrap we, it up. We have to wrap it up because okay. our friend is ready. But it's been so fun hanging out with all of you guys. And, of course, All Lisa. of you. Lisa, you oh need to gosh. live closer to us. I know. I think, you know, I was talking to David about that because we're always like, like, it's like, oh, well, when we see, you know, Kathy and Cheryl, or, and they were like, oh, man, when, when are they going to come visit us? Like, we got to <laughs> hang out. Because like, oh, something will come up and we'll be like, oh, my gosh, Kathy and Cheryl would love this. Or, I don't know. We're just at that point now where we need to, like, have more in-person time together. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I think her and David would have the best time together. <laughs> oh, my gosh. When you were talking about needing the new TVs... I was thinking about him and the, the, the uh, you know, the, the equip, like the tech, the tech stuff and the computers and the iPhones and all of that. It's like, and the reselling. He's really good at that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it justifies it, right? <laughs> In some way. And T.S. is saying, is Beast the brand? Yes, Beast is the brand. Mm -hmm. And I haven't I have put it cover. through all the paces, but, oh. Yeah, she's going to see if she finds the um, cover because I think I have it out for when I'm, I really am planning on filming that I have a list of things that I'm going to do. Now I have a new milk maker that I did real quick called the Milky Plant too. I just saw it. So. Well, I just went, I just went on the Costco website and it was, and I, and I just put the beast in the search bar and it came oh, up. And this is, this is what the cover looks like. God, it looks so clean. Does it look fancy? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the white is going to stain, but see how it has those little things. Like, who needs the things to hold this? So I think people are making their smoothies, and they're like, do, 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 do. Then take, take carrying them away. <laughs> like, I take it to work, whatever. I'm like, so I'm just like, there's certain things I always get with the blender, and I'm just like, okay, I guess this has to go in the counter for when I give it away later. <laughs> and so I felt like those two little things. And, so surely, because of that, um, I will need them. I'll need them immediately. Yes. It immediately. says they're yes. drinking lids with carry caps. Yeah, they're carry caps. <laughs> I'm very excited. I like to <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited as you uh, go through your journey with the beast. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> wax off, wax off. <laughs> <laughs> but this well, is the, did. it's this one that I was really excited about because I'm like, yeah, that's a good pesto size. That's a oh good. Oh my gosh. I'm excited. I totally get it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to go and we'll see Lisa next week. Yep. And Thank all you, of everyone. you guys see sooner. I don't know which way to yes. go. There we go. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. Bye.